Thanks for dropping by, Can't Let Her Die DIY. I just picked up my mystery part. We'll put it right there. Uh, who are we saving today? It's not the 2005 Chevy Colorado, no. We can't let this die, but we're not working on this today. I got a special treat just for you. Come over here. We're working on Sabrina. Take a look at her. Check out the curve on her. Sabrina is a 1977 MGB convertible Roadster Mark IV, 1977, way back then, when the rock and roll was really rocking. She's beautiful. You remember why we call her Sabrina, don't you? Come check her out. She's mostly original parts. I did replace... Uh, the steering wheel and the stick shift in teak wood. It's got a cockpit design to the dash, toggle switches. It's beautiful. A lot of fun to drive. But she ain't driving anywhere right now. Back to coming. When I turn the key on, I do not hear the fuel pump engaging. You know that sound on the MGBs with the uh, the uh, bloop, 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 the fuel pump. Uh, putting pressure of the fuel into the into the carburetors up into the engine. No sound there. So what I've been doing is I give it a little tap and it does come on, but it's intermittently failing. So I want to get this all ready for the spring and the summer and I don't want to have any breakdowns. So uh, that's what we're looking at today. We're not going to let this die. We're going to put in a brand new fuel pump. And then we may recondition the old one. So... Uh, the dogs think every time uh, that I get in here that we're going for a drive. They're lobbying me to go for a drive. Little do they know it is winter and we're not going anywhere. And this thing isn't moving anyway because the fuel pump isn't working. So get out of here, big lug. We gotta get we gotta get to work. <laughs> He's fighting me. Come on! Come on! Let's go! Let's go! He listens. He listens to my every command. You want to see the tools you'll need? Follow me. Okay, to get the fuel pump off, you're going to need a 22 millimeter or a 7 8 wrench. Both will work, or you're going to need a ratcheting drive with 7 8 or 22 millimeter sockets. You're going to need a can of WD 40 or any other type of penetrating oil, uh, a screwdriver, flathead, needle nose pliers, and a uh, clothespin. And of course you're going to need the fuel pump and it is uh, the one I went with. It was from Moss and it is part number 377255 Fuel Pump Electronic SU Skinner Union. She's a beauty. And I also had a little drain pan in case there is a little bit of gas falling down. Be very careful with gasoline and make sure there's no sparks. But uh, I had very little spillage. But I, was, I had that pan there in case I had a lot. And that's it. It's not a lot of tools. So let's get going. Why don't you go back throwing your old clothes? I'll throw in my old clothes. Meet me back here in five minutes and we'll get underneath that Sabrina and see what makes her tick. Hey, I'm glad you're back. Where is the fuel pump on the MGB? Well, it's in the trunk. Or as the Brits would call it, the boot. Marvelous, darling. Let's check it out. This is awesome. Got the tire. We'll get rid of the tire. It's a real tire, not a bell. That's a real tire. Good to go.
we've got the original jack. We don't need that. Clear that out. We've got the cross member bar for the convertible. Goes in that. And here we have it. Now I'll get you caught up. I've already started some. I've taken this was on here, right? That just protects the fuel pump. So I removed that, it's just two screws. And there's the fuel pump, right there. That's the fuel pump. Here's the nice light that goes on it. Check this out, there's no computers in here. Check this out, see this? If you push down on that, the light goes out. So once this breaks, that connection with this part and that part, connects the circuit, so uh, no BCM controlling this. We can just put a little clip on there. Keeps your light from burning down your battery. And we'll go with this baby. Nice. There it is. There is the fuel pump right there. That's a grommet, a rubber grommet. The fuel pump sits in the grommet and you insert it from the other side. It's got two wires here, and we are going to replace it with this SU fuel pump designed for this vehicle. More modern, but made the same way, exact, exactly the same. Correct? This should fit on there, like that. That should go on there, like this. And this goes on there, like that. Should, yeah, just bend that down a bit. And Bob's your uncle. And that's what we're gonna do. Lovely. Now, what was wrong with this fuel pump? Well, it wasn't a lot wrong with it. Uh, it's starting to fail. Uh, so a few times it wasn't working, and all you have to do is give it a little tap, it'll start to pump. It sounds like We're gonna take that off. I'm gonna recondition this pump, uh, clean up the points, get this working well, but we're gonna run with a modern pump so that we don't get left stranded someday. And we'll carry this around with us just as a backup. And that's the mission. If you decide to accept it, that's what we're going to do here today. Sabrina's getting a little bit of love with a new SU fuel pump. Yeah. It looks like there's a clamp going around this grommet, this rubber grommet that holds in the fuel pump. So the first thing, remove the clamp. Looks like we got a flat screwdriver to do the trick. Uh, and we'll just do this. Well, that seems to be not the original screw there, but uh, looks like the original fuel pump and the original clamp, but uh, it might be original screw, I don't know. Let's take it all the way off. All the way. There we go. That's easier. And remember how our wires are located. That one's on there, the blue wire. And that is on that, that one. Clamp comes off, goes over there. And now we have a rubber grommet that sits inside there. And this so we're going to put some WD-40 and lubricate that up and get ready to push this out that way. But I'll have to take a look on the other side. So underneath the car, looking up. Now let's take a look underneath. Okay, I have you and I'm about to go underneath the, the uh, rubber bumper. Uh, this is very close in here. This is the gas tank coated with uh, undercoating and right 
there there it is there is the fuel pump the other side of the fuel pump you can see the grommet where it goes into the uh, trunk to the boot right there is my finger and that is the fuel pump right there there's two lines fuel lines one going to the tank one going to the carburetor and an electrical line right here that plugs in and this whole unit slides that way slides that way into the uh, trunk on the other side yeah check it out in here nice looks pretty good uh, I do notice one thing though see this it appears like my uh, differential is uh, has a little leak to it uh, but I'm not too concerned it looks like uh, it's leaking around this plug right here it's wet around there it looks like it drips down collects right here and drips so maybe that is too loose I've never touched it so maybe it's time I take a look at that oh well another video yeah that'll be great but for today we're focused on this the uh, fuel pump and she's a beauty she's coming out and the new one's going in I'm gonna spray it with WD-40 make it more lubricant for sliding it through okay now I need to disconnect this fuel pump which is easy to do it's right there one wire and the other wire and I pushed it in and I got some movement on that so I pulled it from the other side and I think that WD-40 really really lubricates it makes this much easier so now we have the fuel pump disconnected it cannot function it cannot pump but I probably still have pressure in the lines in the fuel line so I'm gonna start the vehicle up just turn it over a few times and see if I can get rid of the remaining pressure in the fuel lines. Patrick, get out of there. Get it going. Over. Oh boy. Nobody wants to drive. Okay, now we're going to cycle this and it will not start, most likely. Right? We'll uh, pull the choke out and uh, it's in neutral. And we'll just turn it over and uh, suck the remaining fuel up into the carburetor so that we don't have a huge fuel leak when I disconnect those lines, those fuel lines. Okay, starting without a fuel pump. Which I didn't think it would do. It shows how much I know. I'm going to let it run for a little bit until so it sucks up all the fuel in that fuel line. It must be just pulling it up like grab and sucking it up through the line. Cool! There's the fuel pump. We're going to take it off. I took it... Uh, I loosened up the banjo nut. Uh, the banjo nut is right here. I uh, loosened that up with a 27 millimeter. Now it's finger loose. I notice it is not, not, uh, it is not leaking, which is good. This line here goes to the fuel tank right here, and uh, so it's only a short line. It's downhill into the fuel tank, so there should not be any gas in there, which explains why it isn't leaking yet. But it could leak. Oh, there's something. Oh, I got my uh, container here to catch the leak, just in case. And it is gas, folks. Can you see that? Uh, let's see how much of a leak we're going to get. Surely there's not much in there. Yeah, it's just a few drips. So be aware of that. Okay, next to no leaking there. There's the banjo nut. Uh, it has that washer on it. Okay, that's that. That's one down. And the other one may leak a lot more. 
you guys can see it, can you? Uh, it's very tight in here. It's hard to film and do everything at the same time. But uh, now I'm going to take the other one off right there. And that line runs to the engine. So that may be full. And that was something that just fell. Okay, that's the washer I was looking for. Good. That's a felt washer. Let's see if I can get it for you. Okay, so this is what fell. And that goes inside here. I believe on this side as the new fuel pump has an O-ring, a rubber O-ring on that side. So, uh, just so you know. So next target is right there. Okay. The second banjo fitting uh, right here. I loosened it up with the 27 millimeter and it's fin now finger loose and I did get about eight drops of gasoline coming out of that line. So it's pretty good and it stopped. So I was not sure how much I was going to get. And there's that washer. See where that goes? That felt washer. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Pull that, keep that up like that. And you get less, less drips. Okay. Interesting. I may feel, find some way to keep it up like that so it doesn't... It smells of gas down there. Don't, no one light a man. Okay, I'm back. I put a block of wood up there to keep that uh, second banjo fitting up high so it doesn't drip gasoline down. It's no longer dripping. That's good. And now it's time to remove subject number one, the fuel pump. And we have loosened it from the other side, so I don't think there's a lot holding it in there. A WD-40 is doing a really good job to lubricate this. I can pull it out with one hand. I think. I think. There it is. Oh, there's a little bit of residual gas inside the pump. We should have expected that. And it's still connected by one line there. I have to put the camera down to, uh, you can see it in there. I'll just let it dangle. Dangling. Dangling fuel pump. Ah, there it is. You got a better shot of it. I'm going to put the camera down, disconnect that one wire, and that fuel pump should be free, and I'll show you on the other side. Up there. Meet me up top side. Ah, got it. Whew. There's a small fuel line on the back side of it. It's really hard to get off, but I sprayed some uh, right there. Sprayed some WD-40 on it and worked it with a flat screwdriver and got it off. So that's it. That is your fuel pump. Original by the looks of it. And uh, an SU fuel pump, which we're going to clean up the points and keep it as a backup fuel pump in case uh, somebody else needs one when we're driving on a tour. Okay, I've relocated you to my workbench now. We're going to take a look at those fuel pumps. We got the old fuel pump. We got the new fuel pump. We got the nuts that fit into the banjo fittings. So these would screw in there. And now what I wanted to point out was that the old, the original ones, I'm just looking at these, it's, it's exactly the same. On the back end, right there, that's where that fuel line that was hard to get out. So that goes there. That's perfect. Now this is orientated the, the wrong way. So we can just unscrew that, flip that around, because the switch comes from this angle on my car. So that's fine. Now the one difference is, now this fuel pump is made to be exactly like this, but re-engineered. Uh, you don't have to service the points and that sort of thing. It's not gonna, it's gonna last much longer. And uh, for these banjo fittings, they did put an O-ring in here. See that? So I just wanted to point out that the banjo fitting, because this doesn't have an O-ring, the new one does have an O-ring, this one was designed to use this felt washer right here, and then this, the banjo fitting goes over that, and this screws down right there. So uh, what they're telling me, what is that uh, 
you can put a felt washer on this side. So I slid the felt washer all the way down through there. We don't need one on this side because we have the uh, rubber O-ring in there. So that's what I'm going to do. So we can use these. Now I w was going to run out and get new ones of these, but this is looking perfect. There's nothing really wrong with it. I think we can just slide that down. It is a very tight fit too, which tells me it is good. So if you can slide that down super tight, right like that, then we should be good. So there's a rubber hose with the banjo fitting that's on the car, still on the car on the fuel line. Put that down like that on the new one and we screw this in and firm it up and that should work. It should not leak. If it does leak, then I'll go get new felt washers. But I think I'm, I think I'm good. That's the plan. A new fuel pump. I love it. Look at it. It's beautiful. It was quite pricey, but that is nice. Years and years of pumping fuel. You got this. You do. The new fuel pump and the old fuel pump. Does it go to the incinerator? No. This gets a long time service award. We love it. 1977, it is now. Years, and it's still working, it just needs a little tap. It just probably needs a little servicing. It's gonna be my second, my uh, spare fuel pump once I clean up the points. That could be another video. Anyway, yapping too much. Let's get back to the car. That's where the action is. And let's install the new fuel pump. Yeah. So before I install this, I uh, just wanted to let you know, I rotated, I loosened that up and rotated this so it's the same on the same side as is the original. But uh, more importantly, I applied some oil, just uh, 5W30, whatever you have around that O-ring and around that O-ring. And I've applied some oil to those uh, felt washers to get a better seal. I always do that when I see, have O-rings and I think you get a better seal. But uh, come over to the vehicle, back to the boot, and uh, I'll show you what else I do. Just dab a few drops of oil right here on this uh, grommet and uh, work that around there. <laughs> right? We want a nice smooth uh, surface and also uh, the oil helps maintain the rubber, it doesn't dry and crack, crack. And it's not going to be too slippery because we have that cramp, the clamp that goes on the outside of it, remember, it tightens it down. So now we get to uh, slide that fuel pump from the inside out here. Okay, I am underneath the car looking up and there is the grommet that holds the uh, fuel pump. I haven't put the fuel pump in, but I just wanted you to have a take a look you can see that uh, fuel line that goes on the back side there right there in the middle of your that brown one and then there is the two uh, ban banjo fittings over there one and two right there and this is the uh, there that's the switch that goes in so next we're gonna push that fuel pump in through there all right I'm sliding it through now Okay, that wasn't very hard. Uh, that went right in. Good. Beautiful. Okay, I got the new fuel pump on there. It, uh, I attached both the banjo nuts. You can see them from the side here. Get them around. Uh, it's pretty tight in here, so I just got it done. I put them on there, tightened them down as tight as I felt was appropriate. First, I put the fuel line on the back, that one way up in there. See it right there. That attaches that brown little fuel line that attaches to it there, and then this is the plug that goes on there. So we got it in. It slid in easily, and it is good to go. Now we have to test for leaks, and there may be a leak. We'll have to watch that. Okay, the fuel pump is installed on the other side with the banjo fittings. They're good. It's plugged in, everything's good. We gotta install it on this side. So what we what do we have here? We got two plugs. We got one, look at this, it's like a double uh, 
a double connection point like that. And that goes on right on there. And you guys might be wondering what that is. Uh, that goes on like this, there. You guys might be wondering what that is. It goes here, it looks like a ground. There's a ground screw there. That is a noise isolator. When you have electric motors, often they give off an AM or FM electromagnetic uh, signal that interferes with the audio, interferes with the radio. You'll get some interference on the radio. That's what that does. It stops the interference onto your FM and AM radio up there. So a lot of guys may not be putting this on, may not, it'll work perfectly fine without it. If you don't have a radio, you're not going to use the radio, then you don't need that. But uh, I like to have things back the way they were made. So the Brits use this so that it, uh, this, this little motor doesn't interfere in the radio. So that's what that does. A noise isolator. So there it is. That's it. Now we have to put our uh, clamp on because uh, that oil's got it nice and loose. So we gotta, we'll pull this off a bit. I should have put this on first. Uh, you guys won't make that mistake because you have my video. And uh, so that goes on like that. Then we can put these on again. And uh, we are good to test it out. There. Beautiful. Let's see if this thing works. Maybe it doesn't. I'm going to turn the key on. You focus on that. And you should be able to hear it if it's working. Three, two, one, the key is going on. Beautiful. Can you hear that? Now that's pumping up the pressure. It regulates the pressure in the fuel line. So it's because I had sucked a lot of the fuel out of the fuel line. It's pumping fuel in there, getting rid of that air. And uh, I will go underneath and check for leaks. Oh man, you gotta see this. Is it leaking? Come take a look. I'm gonna get you right in here where the action is. Come with me. We're going underneath the gas tank. And we get in there, and there it is. Check it out. Guess what? That's not leaking. No one's more surprised than me. You can do this. There was nothing to it. You can hear it. It's still adding a little bit, uh, still pumping, getting that pressure up to the regulated pressure, the PSIs. I'm not sure what the parameters are, but uh, no leaks. We are good to go. I'm loving this. You got this. You do. This is a treat to work on. This thing is awesome. I love this. Sabrina. Beautiful. Check out the stainless steel muffler. You guys haven't seen that. I should have done a video on that. I installed that sucker myself. Goes all the way back here. And then it goes on to original pipe right there, which is still good. That's the resonator. And uh, anyway, giving you a little bit of tour stainless steel and I didn't go I kept it the uh, I cut that off moss sticks out four inches like that and uh, the only thing is that hole there mice love it so when you got this when you got this on here uh, I started it up the other day in the spring first started it up and I really rezzed it revved it and a, a cooked mouse came flying out. <laughs> I, so he had crawled up there and it blew him right out. Anyway, that's the only downside of that. That, that hole on there is the exact size mice love. Nobody has more fun than me. We are good to go. I am happy. I am psyched. I want to start this puppy up. Meet, uh, meet me up top. Sounds awesome. It's really quick.
quickly gets it, the pressure up to uh, within specs. The engine takes it really well. I like it. It's not leaking under there. Not yet, anyway. I think we did a good job. I think you helped me. Thanks a lot. Uh, that SU fuel pump, that's the one I went with. There's also a plastic one that's a medium level. Or you can put any fuel pump in there that you get off of Amazon or anything. I'll leave some of the video links in the uh, video description. But the most important thing for you to do is like and subscribe. If you haven't already, smash that subscription button. Give me a big thumbs up. Send me a comment. Tell me about your MGB. Love to hear it. It keeps me motivated to do more videos. And I got a ton more to do. I got to get into the front. I got some serious work on the engine. So we're going to pop the bonnet, as they say in Britain, and get greasy and dirty underneath the hood. Stay tuned for that. You guys rock. You got this. You do.